the title of the message is Greatest Blessing Christians Are Neglecting. Greatest Blessing Christians Are Neglecting. Greatest Blessing Christians Are Neglecting. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for all the salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. Thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Thank you for this Bible with the church. Thank you for your work in the Bible. Thank you for preserving it to us. Lord God, help us to be ever attentive to your work. Help us not to be swayed by the things that are happening in the world. Help us to not to yield to the flesh, especially today. Help us to wholly give ourselves up to you and your word. We ask you that you speak to Pastor Jay, give him the authority and liberty from on high to declare your word unto us. Pray that you open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to change and repent of those things that need to be repented of. And please protect us from devil's attacks. Lord, we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The title, Greatest Blessing, Christians Are Neglecting. And as you read your context of the you know, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, probably already came to your mind. It's prayer. Prayer, greatest blessing that you and I have is prayer because prayer is speaking to the Lord. And many times people stop praying or people don't pray like they should. Right off the bat, when we look at verses 6 and 7, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Many of you do not have peace. Why? In your minds? Because, you know, you don't pray. You don't pray like you should. You know, prayer is a very, very, you know, well-talked about topic. It's a doctrine that, you know, once, you know, you start learning about the Bible, it's one of the first doctrines that you learn about, which is prayer. But however, people don't pray. And you ask yourself if you're praying like you should. The Bible says pray without ceasing. You know, prayer is not just studying the Bible. Prayer is not about reading the Bible. Prayer is actually, you know, getting on your knees and spending time with the Lord over and over and over. And as we have begun the new year, we're in January, and we'll be hitting February very soon. You know, how has your prayer life been? I mean, it's the greatest blessing. Why? You could actually talk to, you know, the creator of the universe. You could talk to God one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through anybody in between. You could just go to him directly. I mean, think about it. You know, being Christian, getting saved is the best thing that ever happens to you and me or anybody ever. But afterwards, you have that blessing where you could talk to him. You could talk to God. But how often do you talk to God? That's the question, right? You know, back in you know, Ephesians chapter 6 where there's the you know, armor of God, you know, you don't need no shin protection. Why? You just get on your knees and pray. Yeah. You know, spiritually speaking, that's what you do. You know, how are you going to defeat the devil? Are you going to go out there and fight the devil on your own? No. You know, you macho men's out there. You know, you go to the gym, you just work out, and you think that you could bench press like 300 pounds. Yeah. Now I'm ready to fight the, you know, the devil. No, it's not going to work. Devil could bench press million pounds, right? right? You know, so, you know, devil could do like this. That's why in order to fight the devil, in order to fight the principalities, right, powers that be, you have to be on your knees. That's how you fight. And if prayer is not part of your daily life, 
you're losing the battle. You're losing that spiritual battle. The reason you don't have that peace, the reason you're not close to the Lord, the reason you're losing all the fire and zeal that once you had, because you've neglected prayer. Because you're, you might say, I'm so busy with my life. Everybody's busy. I'm busy with work. I'm busy with school. I'm busy with relationship. I'm busy with raising children then you have to be more close to the Lord. The more busier you are, the more you got to be closer to the Lord. Why? You know, business can never be an excuse of you not spending time with the Lord. No. Business should make you become closer to the Lord. You know, Bible makes sure that, you know, as a Christian, everything that we do, do we do it heartily as unto the Lord, which means that you are supposed to live a busy life, you know, as a Christian. You should be spending time that's worthy of glorifying God. And when those things are in place, what you're going to do? You're going to have prayer life always. You know, early in the morning, you should be praying. During, throughout the day, you should be praying. Yes. And at night, before you go to sleep, you Amen. should be praying. At every opportunity, you should be praying. Yes. Right? If you're at home and if you're like, okay, I only pray. You know, like certain religions, right? I only pray five times a day, you know, looking at Mecca, you know, that's it. Other times, you know, I'm not. Or you're going to be like some other, you know, cults out there. I'm only going to pray three times a day, right? Because Daniel prayed three times. Jesus Christ prayed three times. So like, you know, right now it's like 2.45 p.m. I can't pray. You know, I have to wait until like 5 p.m. You know, that's foolish thinking, yes. right? Because there are too many people, too many cults and false preachers out there that tells you that, okay, since you're saved, you don't have to pray, right? Literally, they're like saying that, you know, God is taking care of you. They become this hyper people out there where they think that, okay, since you're saved, God's going to take care of everything in your life. And those are the people who live like the devil, right? They're actually saved people but because of false teaching and because of desires of their pleasures of sin, they don't do anything. They're like, okay, you know what, Sunday, forget it. I'm going to go golfing. You know, man, weather's so nice this week, so I'm just going to go to the beach, you know, with the family. God will bless us, right? You know, forget about, you know, assembling, you know, together. No, 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 no. Those are in the back in the day. You know, I don't know what back in the day means, right? Everybody says, you know, King James Bible, oh, that, that's good back in the day. You know, what, what is back in the day for you? Is it yesterday or is it like 10 years ago, 100 years ago? I mean, word of God is pure. It's going to last forever. Amen. You know, and the same thing, you know, prayer should be everything. I mean, it should be part of your life that's lasting every single day. If you're not talking to the Lord on a regular basis like you should, then something's wrong with you. And then don't blame God that things aren't going well according to your own viewpoint, right? Everybody always looks at through their own lens, but they never look at through the lens of God. They always go, okay, my life is miserable. My life is not working out, you know, because of blah, 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 blah. No, you got to always look at through the lens of the word of God, through the lens of God. The things that's happening in your life, you should be thankful. If you're a child of God, you should be thankful. If it's, I don't know, compared to other people, you know, you're having a tough time and tribulation, thank God, because God wants to get your attention. Because you've been a wicked sinner, because you, you have, you've been a no good Christian, that's why God wants to get your attention, right? As yeah. Christians, you and I always forget that, you know, we have to live a very, very, how should I say, luxurious Christian life. That happens in heaven. That happens when the Lord comes back. Amen. Right? Ask that to all the disciples, you know, who gave up their life for the Lord. Ask that to all the martyrs. Was their desire in life to sleep more? Was their desire in life to have more pleasure? Was their desire in life to get married? You know, some people, you guys are all about marriage. I'm not saying it's wrong because all you think about is marriage and you forget about the Lord. There are so many Christians, young men and young women, who got messed up in their life because all they thought about is marriage. And that pure 
lustful desires blind them. And then they don't even look at that you shouldn't be marrying, you know, who's not saved. They're like, okay, I'm going to marry that person. I'm going to change that person. You don't. If they don't get saved before your marriage, it's going to be very hard for them to get saved after marriage. Why? Because they already show their heart to you. I mean, we had cases people lie about it. Can you believe it? They tell their soon-to-be spouse that, oh, yeah, I accepted Christ. You know, I pray with your pastor. Whoa. And then afterwards, they have zero fruits. And come to find out, they just prayed after a prayer because, you know, they want to show that, you know, I should be acceptable. So we live in this day and age, everybody lies, right? And then you're a liar. Yes. I'm a liar. So don't be like, uh, you know, this holy, you know, saint from Catholic Church. That's right. You know, you're a liar because when you're put into a spot, you always lie. Yes. That's a human nature. How are you going to get over that, your innate, your natural ability to lie without prayer in your life? Yes. I mean, every time you try to lie, just pray to God. God, I don't want to lie. Amen. Right? My, my, this flesh is telling me to lie. But you don't pray. I don't pray. That's when we get in trouble. Then you completely lie. You just lie on the spot without any hesitation. Because deep inside, you're like, I'm going to heaven. I, I have a chance to get right with the Lord. So at this point, you know, for my better, you know, betterment, to put me in a better place, You know, sometimes it's because of your pride. A lot of times it's because of your pride because I don't want to look bad to my family or my friends or someone else. What do you do? You just lie to yourself and you lie to God and you lie to everybody. Why? Because you don't pray, right? Person of a prayer, people with prayer life like Nehemiah, you know, we always talk about Nehemiah 911 prayer, right? You know? Nehemiah 2.4, but if you go to Nehemiah 1.5, he was a man of prayer. It just doesn't happen like that. That's why when people hear Nehemiah prayer, they don't know what it is. They, even if they know what it is, they don't put it in their life. You can never do certain things suddenly. I mean, that's a human being. You can't suddenly become a prayer warrior unless you start praying, unless you start praying each day on your knees. You can't suddenly become a Bible scholar unless you start studying little by little every single day. You can't become a good father and mother unless you start practicing it each day. That's why prayer, when it comes to prayer, you have to make it a, something that's most important part of your life. Right? People say, oh yeah, you know, studying about all these deep doctrines is important. Yes, but before that, you pray. I mean, knowledge is going to just puff you up. That's a very dangerous thing. A lot of people don't even pray when they're studying the Word of God. Or their prayer is for their own selfish reasons. You pray like, okay, Lord, you know, that brother and that sister looks like they know a lot. But I want to know more than them, you know. You know it seems like they know these deeper doctrines, you know, about you know, angelology, which is tough, you know, demonology, which is tough, right? I want to know more because I want to get into the conversation and let them know that I know something too. What a bad mindset, Yes. right? And too many people, when you don't pray, just pride just takes all over you, you know? As a human being, even a little bit of victory usually brings certain type of pride in you, right? That's why when you receive certain glory in your life that God gives it to you because of his grace and mercy, you start getting proud. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm a humble person. You're already proud. <laughs> you know, I mean, isn't it funny when people's reaction is that, oh, you know, you got new promotion, you know, or you got, you know, different stuff. You know, you're blessed by your children. You're like, you know. Yeah, but you know what? You know, I got to be careful, you know. Before I know it, I'm going to get proud, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay humble, right? You know, there's certain ways of going about it. I mean, at that point, many times you're going to fall because that's the false sense of humility that you're experiencing, right? Because when 
it comes time to really give glory to God, instead you start giving glory to yourself. Yes. You know what? I done something good. You know, then I gotta give like at least one or two percent of credit, uh, and then those one two becomes fifty, and it becomes hundred, and God is left behind. Why? Because you don't pray like you should, right? Whether God answers yes, no, maybe, you have to thank God that you could actually pray to him. Amen. Amen. That's a given. A lot of times you only pray and give glory to God when God says yes. When you receive your own desire, that's when you thank God, you give glory to God, you praise God. But when things don't go your way or when things are taking too long, your prayer is not real prayer. You're just blaming God for everything. And you start blaming your family members. You're blaming your situation. I mean, we just said it. Be careful for nothing but in everything. Everything includes good and bad. Yes. Right? Everything. Even if bad things happen to me, i got to give thanks to God. Because there's a reason why it's happening. Romans 8.28. Right? If good things happen, yeah, we've got to give thanks to God. More I mean, if we're still being in a state of waiting, we got to be thankful to God. Yes. Because God already knows. God hears our prayers. Amen. So when it comes to prayer, I mean, there's, you know, prayer consists of four parts. Some of you already know, you know, but for the new believers, you know, you should know. It's easy to memorize acronym ACTS, right? ACTS. You know, A equals adoration. You know, first part of your prayer should always be about worshiping and praising God. You know, don't go straight to what you want, okay? That's later, right? You know, go straight to praising God and worshiping God. That should be the first part of your prayer. You can't worship and praise God unless you read the Word of God. Yeah. If there's no Bible in you, all you're going to say is, you know, God, you are wonderful. And then you're just stuck there. You're great. You know, but you got to see all the marvelous things that he has done and who he is yeah. through the lens of the Bible and also through your experience, I'm sure. And we're not talking about Holy Spirit experience, right? <laughs> experience about as a Bible believer. Amen. So that's how you start your prayer with adoration. And then second part, you know, C, A-C-T-S is confession. You know, you got to confess your sins. Before you ask anything, you've got to confess your sins. Because your sins and iniquity will block you from getting those, you know, blessing and answer prayer that you want, Lord, to, you know, answer you in a way. And this can't be just, how should I say, generic. You know, that's why people pray for a long time. Because they reflect on their sins. Right? We're not like Catholics where... We give every detail to a priest, a human being. No, you're giving it to the Lord. Amen. Right? And it, I don't even know, right? Just knowing me and knowing human personality. I mean, how many of you guys actually confessed your sins last night before you came to church mm. or this morning? You can't be generic. Lord, I'm so sorry for what I did today. Please forgive me. What is that? I mean, God's specific God. Yes. Do you want God to just say, you know what? You know, I blessed you. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to ask God for a blessing of your jobs, marriage, you know, every little particular part of your life, your food. Then if you want God to be specific to you, why can't you be specific to God? Yeah. Why? Because you're lazy. That's it. You and I are lazy Lazy buns, right? Amen. You can't stand on... I mean, you could literally... If you are doing something that you love, say you love sports, right? Whatever sports it might be, you know, basketball, you know, baseball, anything. You won't even know if time passes by too much, if your body could handle it, right? You just play and play and play, and you enjoy that time. But... When it comes to getting on your knees and praying to God, it's really hard for you. I understand your flesh hates it, devil hates it, right? But do you really love the Lord? 
But do you really love prayer? Then you're going to do it. You're going to overcome your laziness because it's important to you. How do people, you know, who are, how should I say, having weight issues overcome it? Because they saw that their health is very important to them, right? That's how they overcome it. Because if they don't take control of it, they might die sooner than later. You know, prayer is, is your lifeline to the Lord. It's the greatest blessing. How can you not love it, right? You know, what is your wish in life? Become rich? You know, have a best family? Go to best school? Get best grade? Or do you want to have best relationship with the Lord? Amen. I mean, that should be number one. If when someone asks you for a wish and your first answer is not, you know, I think a couple things, right? You want the Lord to come back right now. Yes. That's, that's a really good wish. And the second thing is you want to have a close, closer relationship with the Lord. If those two are not your you know, first two answers, now your priority is wrong. I tell you, you've been praying the wrong way, right? Because you know, people say, okay, your birthday, and then you have a bunch of candles. They say, you know, blow out the candles and make a wish. I don't know what your wish is, right? Oh, Lord, please resolve our financial burden. Right? Lord, please, you know, help me to, you know, marry a right Christian. Right? Oh, Lord, please raise my children well. You know, I mean, those are legit. You know, I'm not saying it's wrong. But what should be number one, though? Right? All those prayers are about you and your desires yes. and your wishes. Right. But as Christians, you're bought with a price. Thank right? you, Lord. You're not your own anymore. You're God's. Amen. You're Lord's. Shouldn't your desire be all about the Lord? Yes. But if you haven't been praying, forget it. You know, there's no if and buts. You haven't been praying. That is not your desire. Right. That's why confession is very important. You know, first John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You have to do true confessing of your sins. You have to repent, right? Repent just means turning away from it. You got to turn away from your sins yes. once and for all. You know, it's a false confession when you say, Lord, you know, I'm really sorry for what I did. I don't want to do it again, but you do it two minutes later or next morning or next night. Yes. I mean, were you really serious about it? I don't know. It's hard to believe that if you're truly serious about it, you commit the same sin over and over and over. Don't get me wrong. I mean, our flesh is so strong. It is very possible. But if you were true, then it just tells you that it wasn't a true confession. It wasn't a true repentance, right? right? But you need to have true repentance in your life. So there's adoration. There's confession. Make sure you confess your sins in, on your knees in prayer. Don't be lying down on your bed and like say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Do you, can you imagine if you're in front of a judge at a trial just because, you know, you want to be comfortable, right? And you committed crimes and you're, you're just lying down. And then, judge, forgive me. What kind of attitude is that, right? Can you imagine, parents, your children made mistakes they committed, you know, certain things wrong, right? And then you're having talking session with them. You're sitting in a dining table, and suddenly your child goes, Mom, Dad, let me just be comfortable, okay? They lie down on the bed, right, or on the sofa. Hey, I'm sorry you know, for what I did. Forgive me. How'd you feel? You feel like, man, this punk, right, you know? This guy, you know, needs more than that, more than talk. He needs some discipline. Yep. If you feel like that about your children when you're dealing with them or anybody else, how can you show that kind of attitude to God Almighty? Yes. Right? I mean, it's a reverence, adorance, fear of God. That's why you get on your knees and pray. Amen. Do you think when the city of Nineveh repented and all those animals as well, I think they were just lying down, you know, being a silly people when they were really praying to the Lord with true repentance, when the whole city repented? 
No. They, were, they put on sackcloth, right? They're on their faces on the ground and praying to God. Yes. That's how serious they were about their sin. You know, prayer life will not complete, right, without you confessing your sins. You could give glory to God for five hours, but if you don't get right with you about your sin problems, you can't go anywhere, right? God will receive all the adoration, but he can't do anything about you because it's almost like in order to go to this school, you know, you do A, B, C, D, but you only do A. You do C, you do D, but you skip B. Then they say, no, you don't meet the qualification. Yes. I mean, you want God to truly bless you. You want to really live a you know, spirit-filled life, right? You got to confess. I mean, that's, that's a topic that many Christians just neglect. You know, it's not between you and me. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. Now, don't think that it's between you and your spouse either. It's not about between you and your children. It's not between you and your grandma. It's not between you and your loved ones. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. Whatever is happening in your life, whatever sins that you committed, you have to get right with the Lord. You know, the greatest thing about the Lord is that if you truly repent from the bottom of your heart, He forgives. Amen. That's it. No if and buts. Obviously, you and I have to, you know, reap what we have sown. You know, that's just natural. But as far as that sin that you committed, you truly got to right with the Lord with, that's it. You don't have to be accountable for it at the judgment seat of Christ. You already, you and I will have so many things to do, literally, at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to spend hours and hours and hours, you know, maybe even days trying to explain all of our sins to the Lord as He plays our life, you know, on a giant screen and, you know, up in space somewhere, right? Yes. That's already horrifying and terrifying as it is. That's right. Don't you want like little less to be accountable for? Amen. I mean, it would be the best if you and I, you know, right before, you know, we leave this earth, we get right with him, with everything. Amen. I mean, that's the goal. That's the goal that you and I should have. And in order to do that, you got to get on your knees and you got to confess your sins in prayer. And if you don't remember, you got to ask the Lord to help you remember. Yes, sir. Don't do it on your own. Just help him to remember. I mean, ask him to help you remember. Lord, you know, I really want to have a you know, clean relationship with you. I don't want any sin to come between you and me. Lord, if I can't remember because you know, I'm growing older. You know, I'm more forgetful than ever. Yes. Right? You know, Lord, help me to remember, you know. You know, who goes, help me to remember. And then suddenly, whoa, all those sins that you committed, right, suddenly pops on your head, you know, things that you have to get right with the Lord about. You know, you got to do it. The longer that you have lived and the longer that you backslidden and haven't put, you know, prayer as your priority, you're going to have to spend a lot more time on your knees. But even young, young people, with these days of technology, right, all those things are available on internet and cell phone, social media. I mean, their rate of committing sin is a lot faster. A lot, lot faster. Because they get to know more wicked stuff a lot faster than ever before. Don't think that your child is innocent. Right, parents? No. You know, and especially in certain communities, right? You know, Asian community, Hispanic community, you know. Caucasian, every community, they think that their children is like an angel. Like, oh, yeah, my child will never think like that. My child will never watch that. My child will never commit that. And before you know it, they're the ringleaders. Yeah. I mean, they're distributors, right? Yes. And they're the one that, who does the most wicked things under the umbrella of being a Bible-believing Christian. Right. Don't think that just because you go to a Bible-believing Christian think that you can't commit terrible sins. Right. You, you can do anything that unsaved person can do, or worse. Then you have to be cognizant of your children. You know, they're like, oh, you know, I'm a macro management. You know, I let my children have freedom and do everything they want. Man, you're a fool, right? 
May you wanna see your children in jail, unwanted babies, right? Being addicted to all these wicked drugs? Let them live free, right? No, you have to get a hold of them. Yes. Until uh, they leave your home, yeah. you have to check everything. Amen. I don't care if you don't like your children, you're gonna thank your parents in your adult life that they protected you from sin. Absolutely. And they exposed your, exposed your sins. You should be thankful. If you don't get your sins exposed, you never change. No. You're going to do it over and over and over. Yes. You know what prayer does? Prayer will expose sins, give you opportunity to get right with the Amen. Lord. And as whatever you are, right? As a son, as a daughter, as a parent, you know, as a mom, as a dad, grandma, grandpa, you know, aunt, uncle, you know, co-worker, acquaintance, cousins, everything, it all is going to come to light. Yes. I mean, do you really take prayer seriously? It's the greatest blessing. You know, I think one of the greatest feelings that human being could have is what? When you're super clean, right? Yes. I, mean, about it. I mean, say your labor, right? You have a long day of, you know, digging ground, you know, or, you know, working in the trenches, you know, or like, you know, yes. painting or do all of that. And then, you know, you don't look like yourself anymore, right? And you don't look like oh, what I see you on Sunday. No. And then, you know what? And then you go take a, you know, good shower, wash yourself up, and then you come out. You feel really good. Woo! Right? Yes. And then right before you sleep, I mean, you don't want to sleep with, uh, you know, all the sweats oh, on you, no, right? No, I mean, no. you're clean, right? Yes. I mean, as Christians, I mean, don't you think you'll feel good? Don't you think you'll feel better if you just resolve all your sin problems? Yeah, you confess your sins before the Lord. Yes. That's why you have no power in your witnessing. When you're living in sin, you can't. That's true. You just can't. How yeah. can you tell someone? To trust Christ as your Lord and Savior when you're committing the same sins like them. It's like, for example, you know, I mean, people work, right? And then, you know, at different times after work, you know, people go drink, right? They go drinking. Like, they call it happy hour meeting and stuff. You think you're going to get through an unsaved person while you have a beer on your hand <laughs> and they're drinking? Hey, you know, let's talk about Jesus Christ. Now they're going to laugh at you. Yeah. They're going to look at you as the biggest hypocrite ever. Right? I mean, if your character is known as someone who's busybody, who likes to gossip at work, and suddenly you go to them, hey, you know, let's talk something serious. Let's talk about heaven and hell. You know, Jesus Christ. They're like, you're kidding me. You're the <laughs> biggest liar I know. You're the laziest bum I know. Right? You don't do anything to your best, and you're telling me to believe what you believe in, right? Ultimately, it's their fault, but you have a lot of hand in it. Yes. You know, if they don't get saved because of your bad testimony, you know, Ezekiel said their blood will be on your hands. Yes. Right? That's you. And why does that happen? Going back all the way, because you don't confess your sins, because you don't get right with the Lord. So what happens is that as you read the word of God, it's scary. If you look at Israelites, what happened to the Israelites during the days of Moses and so on, and during the days of Jesus Christ, so on. What happens is that if you reject God's correction over and over and over and over, you become blinded. And God will let it happen. In certain cases, your heart will be hardened. You reject all of God's attempts of correcting you, rebuking you, reproofing you, and you reject everything which Pharaoh did. It's like, time's up. You know, those Pharisees, Sadducees, those Israelites who actually saw Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all the prophecies, who is the Messiah who rejected him, they became blinded more and more. They saw him perform miracles, but suddenly they can't see that anymore. Her Dr. Ruckman has a great, great you know, illustration. He was doing chalk talk one day. 
And then he was like this. And then some man goes, you know, I can't see the gospel. You know, he was doing, you know, preaching on chalk talk on gospel. And then he goes, yeah, you can't see because your back is against the, you know, against the boar. So, okay, he turned around. He goes, I still can't see, right? Of course, your hands are covering your eyes, right? Remove it. And the man goes, I still can't see because your eyes are closed. That's what you do, Christians. Yes. If you continue to commit sin and not get right with the Lord, every chance that God's given you, you're just going to not see anymore. And then you become completely blinded. Right. Even after those attempts and you finally try to open it, it's too late. You close your eyes too long, you can't open anymore. So if you don't get right with the Lord anytime, I mean, I mean, hopefully you get right with the Lord like right now, right? Amen. If you don't get right with the Lord like today, then it could be the last time you could actually see. That's scary. Because do you think Pharaoh knew when he was heart was gonna be hardened? No. Do you think those Israelites knew when they were gonna be blinded like that? No. Do you think a bunch of Christians that you saw or seen who was faithful to the Lord but lived in a secret, sinful life, and they're gone? Do you think they saw that coming? No. No. It's going to happen to you. It could happen to me. That's why Lord gives us this chance to get right through preaching, Amen. through reading the Word of God, Thank you, through Lord. prayer. Amen. Then you have to take advantage of it. Yes. You know, don't think that, it, again, it, it's comical. It's not, preaching is not intended for someone sitting next to you. No. Someone sitting behind you, in me. front of you. It's for you. Amen. And it's for me personally. You know, unless you take it to the heart, you'll never change. So you have to confess, right? So AC, so adoration, confession. And then comes T which is thanksgiving. You got to be thankful for everything, good or bad. You just got to be thankful, you know. That thankful section should take a long time. Unless, like, your little children who's, like, under six, you know, rest of you adults, you should have a lot of things to thank God for. Amen, amen. I mean, right off the bat, salvation, yes. right off the bat, King James Bible, Right off the bat, you know, the fact that you could move, breathe, you know, you could hear, you could actually do something for the Lord, you could sing. I mean, on and on and on and on, right? That Thanksgiving section should be at least 15, 30 minutes prayer. If you, have, if you don't have nothing to thank God for, I mean, you're, you're blinded, yeah. right? You really, I'm not sure how you could even say that, right? As you read the Word of God, there's more things to be thankful for. Again, they go hand in hand. Right? If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to get closer to the Lord, you got to have a lot of Bible in you. Amen. Which means you have to read. Yes. I mean, right now, you should be in Leviticus by now. And if you're going through your Bible schedule, you should be done with Genesis and Exodus. And you should be done with like 90 chapters of reading by now, right? If you're not, I mean, you're kind of behind, you know, but you should catch up. The more you read the Word of God as God talks to you, the more you can talk to God about it. Amen. And we're not talking about gibberish, right? No. No, right? I mean, that's not even a prayer. You know, people are like using tongues as a, you know, way of talking to God. I mean, if it's an official language that, you know, apostles use, during the, you know, day of Pentecost back in the day to unbelieving Jews? Yeah, but you're not a Jew, That's right. Right? That's right? And it's for unbelievers, right. right? So forget about those gibberish. Just do a real prayer that you could understand. Amen. Whether English, you know, Spanish, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, oh, whatever right. it is, you know, yeah. just pray to the Lord in that sense. Give thanks to Him. Everything. Amen. Right? Don't give glory to yourself one bit. Give every glory to God. Amen. 
Yes. Give glory to God that you're actually here today in a Bible-believing church. That there is actually a ministry, Bible-believing ministry in this area. You know, there's so many brethren out there, you know, who's listening. They have nowhere to go. Right. Yes. They don't have anywhere to go. But don't feel so bad about yourself either. Thank God that you know the truth. Amen. Man, you, you, wherever you are, you do your best. Amen. You know, stand firm. you got to hold the fort wherever you are. If you're the only, per, only one Bible believer in your region, you know, God put you there for a reason. Thank God for that. Amen. And just, just stand strong because, yes. you know what? Lord will eventually, you know, put something there. I believe it, right? If there are enough Bible-believing souls in the area, Lord will put something there. Yes. He'll, I mean, why not, yeah. right? right? I mean, He wants everyone to repent and come to the knowledge of truth. Yes, sir. So that's, that's what He wants. He's going to do it. But it starts from one person at a time. But shouldn't you and I be, be so thankful in this ministry Amen. that we actually even have a building, Amen. right? You know, we actually have a place to actually worship Him. Yes. And then... You know, listen to his word. And then above, I mean, even more, we actually could have fellowship together. You know, that's one of the things that you know, I feel most bad for, you know, this, our brethren who's listening, and, but who doesn't have nowhere to go. They miss fellowship. I mean, you can't buy the fellowship. No. You can't find fellowship from this, you know, secular, you know, watered down Christians. No. You actually feel more dirty some, a lot of times, right? right? But this is precious. So there's so many things to thank God for. And then supplication, last one, ACTS, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. You know, this is where you could bring intercession, you could bring requests, and you could bring your petitions and your desires to the Lord, right? But who do you start with? Do you start with yourself? No, 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 no. You start with everyone else, and then you finish with your, right? But if everybody else only takes 10 seconds, man, something's wrong with you. You don't really care about them. Like, oh, Lord, I pray for all of the church members. Amen. And then you go to, okay, Lord, I need this. You know, I need that, you know. Please give me this, give me that. And then you do all of that, right? If you were God, how would you feel, right? That's kind of foolish, right? You're just a selfish being. You don't yes. care about other, you know, members in the body of Christ. Right. You got so many, to, so many things to pray for, right? You got to pray for the church ministry. You got to pray for the pastor, your pastor's wife, yes. your leaders, your brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, Amen. internet ministry, you know, you lost souls out there, yes. right? You, I mean, this is a time you pray for all the lost, lost souls that you know of, and you want people to get saved. Amen. Yeah, and then you got to bring them one by one, right? If it's Johnny, pray for Johnny's soul to get saved. You know, if it's, you know, what, Jane, pray for that soul to get saved. Every single person. And it should be every day. That's why, you know, prayer warriors, right, like George Mueller, they pray like four or five hours easy. Even one one at, at one at a time sometimes. Can you imagine? You and I probably will just fall asleep, right? Yes. Or you get in this position, you know, lying down, you know, in your belly position. Uh, that's, that's shameful. And those folks had a lot less than us, and they spend more time with the Lord. Yes. So think about your prayer life. I mean, it could be the greatest blessing in your Christian walk right now, it could be one of the most neglected blessings in your walk. You know, it's a very, you know, well-talked-about doctrine, prayer, and everybody knows how important it is, right? It's time for you to really put action into it now, you know? Do that A-C-T-S truly from bottom of heart. And if you do bottom of your heart, all you're going to do is get on your knees and spend more and more time with the Lord. I mean, after today, you and I should be spending more time with the Lord. If after today, your pattern still stays the same, or it goes actually worse, I mean, 
as they say, you know, it's an open season. Devil's going to get you one day. You're going to get your chastisement, and you're going to have a scar for your life, and you can't blame God for it because you blinded yourself. Let's live a, you know, prayerful life as a Christian. Amen. Let's really enjoy this greatest blessing. Yes. You know, the Lord's giving it to us. Why do you want to reject it, right? You know, just enjoy it until we see the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, when it comes to this great blessing, the greatest blessing you've given to us and after salvation, this ability to talk to you, Lord God, we've neglected it for so long or we've just misused it. Help us to get right with you, Lord. Help us truly confess our sins, repent of our ways and get closer to you and be thankful. I mean, be thankful for everything and truly let our supplication not be about our selfish reasons, but pray about everything, Lord. Ministry, your return, lost souls, the word of God, everything else, Lord. And let us be the last to be mentioned in our prayers from now on. I know that all of our desires get closer to you, but before that, Lord, help us do the things that we need to do first, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the services today. And above all, Lord, come quickly, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.